Representatives speaker race, our highest court is back in session and the first Democratic debate is finally on the horizon. Our Washington bureau correspondent, Alex Miller, joins us live in Washington to break down this week's biggest political stories. Alex, we have a lot to talk about today. We thought we'd be discussing the next speaker today, but that has all changed in what, the last 18 to 24 hours? How did we get to this point? So I definitely thought we were going to be talking about who the next speaker was. Last week, we they had announced that the elections would be yesterday for speaker. And then earlier this week, John Boehner moved those elections to October 29th. And the nomination uh, meeting was supposed to be yesterday. But at that meeting, Representative Kevin McCarthy, who was the front runner and expected to be nominated, uh, abruptly dropped out of the race. It was shocking to everyone, members, staffers, uh, journalists. Uh, we're all extremely shocked by this, but in hindsight, looking back, there were some red flags. McCarthy made some comments on Fla Fox News last week about Hillary Clinton's candidacy and the Benghazi committee in Congress that got him into some hot water. And in his dropout speech, he mentioned those comments, saying maybe they weren't the best idea. Um, but re the real problem really had to do with a small group of conservatives. They said that they would not support McCarthy when he needed that path to 218 votes in order to become speaker. And that's really likely what made him drop out of the race and here's what he had to say about those votes. I don't want making voting for speaker a tough one. I don't want to go to the floor and win with 220 votes. I think the best thing for our party right now is that you have 247 votes on the floor. If we are going to be strong, we got to be 100% united. You know, this is really the issue <clears throat> among House Republicans right now is that there is a lot of division within their party. So McCarthy really wants them to get more, all 218 votes. They, he wants them to get every single vote uh, and not be divided. Likely this small group of conservatives uh, were upset because of some concessions that McCarthy refused to make. One Republican told me that he asked McCarthy if he would go to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and ask them to, quote, quit attacking conservatives. And when McCarthy said he wouldn't, this particular member said that he knew that he wasn't going to get, McCarthy wasn't going to be getting his vote. Alex, still so much more to this story. So who are we looking at next for that position of Speaker of the House? So now McCarthy is saying that he's going to stay as majority leader, which is the position he currently holds, which is second behind Speaker. So that race is effectively over. As far as Speaker goes, Jason Chaffetz had already thrown, already thrown his name into the ring, but it seems like he might be out as well. So that only really leaves Representative Daniel Webster from Florida. But he's really only the front runner now because there's no one else in the race at this very moment. But do not worry. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of names being thrown into the ring. Paul Ryan's name has been thrown in, uh, but he's saying he doesn't want to be speaker. Now, you can uh, speculate that it might be because of a future presidential run or he doesn't really want to be leading this particular House of Representatives. Uh, but I suspect with this next recess, the House is about to go on a recess for another week or so, uh, that when they come back, they're going to have a few more names in mind. Okay, Alex, the Supreme Court kicked off its October term this week. What can we expect this term? So the court is expecting to take up cases that have a variety of topics, from abortion to affirmative action to capital punishment. Now, they're not going to be taking up these cases in their broad terms. They're going to be looking at very specific issues regarding each of these topics. Uh, earlier this week, they took up capital punishment, two separate cases that had to deal with jury instructions and had to deal with whether uh, these two convicted murderers, who happened to be brothers, uh, could be tried together. They were tried together and convicted together, and they're asking... Uh, that for separate trials. And if, in fact, the bench did go their way, this would be a huge change for not only capital punishment trials, but different types of trials that have nothing to do with uh, capital punishment. Uh, experts are saying that this is unlikely that the bench will vote in favor of these two uh, brothers. But as far as the jury instructions, uh, they might vote in favor of this, which would mean that the way that jury instruction happens across the country would have to change. And for Kansas, this could be a particular problem since that's where the case is from. They have a number of people on death row at the moment, and they would have to reopen those cases and re-examine whether their juries were instructed properly. So, Alex, switching gears now, the first Democratic debate is next week. We know we shouldn't be expecting fireworks like we did in the Republican debates, but what can we expect? 
Yeah, we're not going to get those fireworks that we got in those first two pre Republican debates. But the, the candidates are saying that they're preparing th for the issues, not necessarily for those fireworks. Bernie Sanders says that he's not preparing the way a typical person would. Many candidates do these mock debates where they have mock candidates stand in. You know, you're not seeing any sort of mock Hillary Clintons in the Bernie prep. Uh, he's looking at briefing books and really reading up on these issues. Um, and when he looks at these issues, he's really preparing to be able to talk to Hillary Clinton and potentially Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden isn't actually in the race yet, um, but a draft Biden movement did release a 90 second ad earlier this week asking him to run. And CNN has kind of piggybacked on this. They're the ones that are going to be holding this debate. Um, and they're basically saying, hey, Joe, if you want to run and if you decide even the day of, we'll let you on our stage, which is completely different than that Republican debate where candidates had to fight tooth and nail to get on that stage. Now, Hillary Clinton, uh, her path has been a little bit different. I think she's entering this debate a little differently than she thought she was going to. She's bruised and beaten from scandal after scandal over the last couple of months. Um, so she's really just going to have to work on that trust factor and the relatability factor as well. So not necessarily those big fireworks that we expected in the first Republican debates, but it still should be interesting uh, to watch. Always a lot of news out of Capitol Hill. Thank you so much to our Washington Bureau correspondent, Alex Miller.